Okay. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I am Anjusha Matthew. I am an assistant professor at M4I Institute in Maastricht University. In IMRES Consortium, I am involved in Work Package 5, Task uh, 3. So it's not just Maastricht University is involved in this work package. Uh, Research Centrum in UDIC as well as Eurobioimaging is involved uh, in this uh, Task 5.3. Uh, so here we are focusing on uh, bioimaging. Uh, so we wanted to make advancements in mainly in sample preparation as well as sample handling uh, for uh, which is relevant uh, for the biologically relevant samples. If I am being more specific, uh, we are advancing the technological and methodological aspects, mainly in sample preparation, handling and transfer, also in analysis procedures, uh, mainly in electron microscopy for the characterization of uh, biologically relevant samples. Even though the main focus is on electron microscopy, we also wanted to correlate our studies using other imaging modalities available in uh, both ULIC as well as in Maastricht, such as uh, mass spectrometry, spectroscopy, et cetera. This task is divided into two subtasks. The first one is the development of a universal transfer device for biological samples under cryogenic conditions. So that allows the transfer between uh, um, between uh, the different imaging modalities. Now we are mainly focusing in uh, light microscopy, uh, secondary ion mass spectrometry, focused ion beam scanning electron microscopy, FIPSAM, and uh, transmission electron microscopy by using conventional uh, carriers such as liquid nitrogen based ones, as well as using MEMS based ones. Subtest Two is basically the utilization or the development of automated sample handling systems for improved uh, room temperature and cryogenic imaging using different imaging modalities for the study of biologically relevant samples in both cryogenic conditions as well as in liquid phase conditions. This will be achieved with mainly four components. So the component one will be utilized for the execution of task uh, one, uh, task two, uh, and uh, component two will be used for the execution of task one, and component three and four will be used for improvements in the overall goal of the project. So component one is the NIAID-1 platform from a Netherlands-based company called Petrotem. Uh, so NIAID-1 is an automated graphene liquid cell assembly platform. Uh, component two is a cryogen-free or liquid nitrogen-free uh, cryogenic um, microcooler. This is actually sold by another Netherlands-based company, Demcon. Component four is a position and time-sensitive TimePix4 detector. Uh, so this is the most advanced detector from the TimePix Medifix family uh, from the Medifix consortium in CERN. This is already installed in the 200 kV Artica in our institute. And also this NIAID-1 is already purchased in our institute. And the fourth component is uh, something which is already under development in our institute for quite some time. So that is the next generation vitrification device, which has a much faster cooling rate that allows the vitrification of uh, thicker samples compared to the one we use for plunge freezing. So these components will be mainly utilized in electron microscopy, but we will be also correlating with other imaging modalities. Uh, for example, in Maastricht, with the electron microscopy as well as the light microscopy facilities, we also have some unique mass spectrometry instrument. For example, we have a FIPSUM that is connected to the Orbitrap Explorers, which is under development, and also we have several SIMS instruments. This can be used for the molecular analysis of the samples along with the structural studies. As well as in a uh, uh, ULIC, they have several electron spectroscopy workflow that is combined with the electron microscopy instrument that can be used to perform elemental analysis along with the structural analysis. And uh, in ULIC, they also have several crystallography instrument that can be used for the 3D structural determination of biological samples. And they have a 4D stem instrument where it is coupled with a time -big 3 detector which allows phase contrast imaging. Coming back to subtask one, which is the development of a universal cryotransfer device. Now we are focusing on sample transfer between a light microscope, SIMS instrument, FIPSUM, and TEM. So we will be mapping the area of interest in the biological samples in the light microscope, and that will be transferred to the SIMS where we can do fine milling as well as chemical analysis. This will be sent to FIPSUM where we can do the milling of larger area, and that will be sent to the TEM where we can do the high resolution image analysis. So 
when we develop the um, universal cryo transfer device, it should be able to transfer the samples between all these four uh, imaging modalities. Also, we have to make sure that all this instrument has cryo stages. So except this three, the light microscope doesn't have a cryo stage. So for the implementation of cryo stage as well as cryo transfer, we were thinking of implementing the uh, MEMS-based cryo cooler from the DEMCON. This works. So this is how the cryo cooler look like. This works based on the Jules Thompson uh, cooling effect. Uh, so here, the main component is this microfluidic chip. Uh, and as I mentioned, there is no liquid nitrogen. Instead of that, the nitrogen gas goes through this high pressure channel and low pressure channel. That will allow the temperature to change from room temperature to the cryogenic temperature. So this part will be at room temperature. Here you can, it will be at a gradient and this will be at the cryogenic temperature. Since there is no moving parts, the vibration levels are quite low. It is less than one nanometer peak to peak, as you can see here. And the temperature stability is also quite high. It is close to 10, uh, less than uh, 10 uh, millikelvin. And another important thing is you can easily uncouple the sample holder and add custom sample holders. And another thing which I wanted to mention, the vacuum requirement is less than uh, 5 e to the power minus, uh, e minus 4 millibar. Uh, so this is something that is suitable for the cryo stage, which we are planning to implement in a uh, light microscope. But we are not sure this is something we will be used for cryo transfer. So initially, we were thinking of using this micro cooler for long distance sample transfer, which is now done with liquid nitrogen as well as dry shipper. Uh, but the main purpose was to use this in public transport. Uh, but since uh, the minimum pressure of the nitrogen uh, gas bottle we can go here is 80 bar, we are not sure about that. So we will be using this for the cryo stage in the light microscopy. For cryo transfer, we might go with the conventional schemes. Uh, so we already have something that is under development in our lab for quite some time. So this device is used for the cryo transfer between different imaging modalities. Uh, so here you can see here is where we can place the auto grid and this is the shuttle and this is the call holder. This is something which is from the SIMS sample chamber, uh, SIMS uh, source chamber. Uh, and for the sample transfer, you can take out this shuttle using this housing and uh, you can transfer it to the other instruments. So the next step is the characterization of this uh, um, sample transferring device, as well as the development of the MEMS-based um, uh, cooler uh, in the um, light microscope. Moving to subtask 2, which focus on the uh, incorporation of, uh, uh, not incorporation, utilization of sample handling systems for improved cryogenic and room temperature imaging using different imaging modalities for the study of biological samples in cryogenic conditions as well as liquid phase condition. Uh, for that, we will be using NIAD-1 platform. First, I will be focusing on how we can make improvements in liquid phase uh, electron microscopy. Then I will be moving to the improvements in the cryogenic electron microscopy. Uh, so the challenges which we face in liquid phase electron microscopy is mainly the hydrated samples have difficulty surviving in the ultra high vacuum in the electron microscope. And we are here dealing with organic samples. Organic samples uh, mainly consist of low atomic numbers that results in low contrast images and organic samples are not electrically conductive. So that can also affect the image resolution and it is easily damaged by the electron beam. And uh, with the conventional methods, the liquid phase samples are thicker, which is not good for them. So there are several solutions. Uh, low voltage electron microscopy, where we use a low energy beam that actually reduces the surface damage. And the second one is straining with uh, heavy metals that actually improves the image contrast. But one of the problem uh, I am aware of is that the pH, it can cause the pH, uh, change in the pH of the surface and results in image artifacts. And the third one is the silicon nitrate based liquid cell holder, which works quite well. Uh, but one of the uh, limitation which I am aware of is the heterogeneity of the layer that can also cause 
uh, it can also affect the image resolution. And the last one is the graphene liquid cells. The NIAD-1, which we are using here, can pro um, produce graphene liquid cells. This allows the visualization of uh, organic samples in their native hydrated conditions with optimal contrast and resolutions. Since we are doing imaging in native hydrated conditions, it will allow us to study the dynamics process real time. Uh, so in NIAD-1, we can use standard temp grids. On the top of that, you can first deposit the first layer of the graphene. Then you can add the biological samples with pipette. And uh, then on the top of that, you can add next layer of graphene. So the overall, it only takes three minutes for the deposition of the second layer. But you have to keep in mind that for the deposition of the first layer, it can it can take up to 4.5 hours, but you can do that overnight. It won't affect the experiment time. And uh, the thickness of the GLCs is uh, uh, in tens of nanometers, so which is good for them. And the graphene coverage is quite high. It is more than 95%. So this will be something we will be used for room temperature TEM imaging. Uh, so uh, in cryogenic TEM imaging also, we can use NIAD-1 uh, because it is a graphene coating instrument and graphene has already shown uh, the, already proven that it can be used to reduce the charging effects and improve the um, resolution of the image. The cryo -tem in um, instrument in our lab is actually equipped with a TimePix4 detector. The previous study from our group where the graphene coated grids and a combination of TimePix3 detector uh, so you have to keep in mind that this graphene coated grids is not from NIAD-1 and it's the TimePix-3 detector where we use BFRB, which is a 20 firmer protein. And you can see the dif uh, difference between without graphene and with graphene images. So the one with graphene, the um, charging effect is much reduced and it results in improved imaging quality. Now we have TimePix4, which is better in terms of uh, energy resolution, time resolution, and larger imaging area, as well as much readout speed. This will be used in combination with NIAD-1, where we can uh, code this, uh, we can trap the uh, proteins or the biological samples in a sandwich form. So we hope that this combination will improve different aspects of imaging. And the last device we will be used at the later stage of the project will be the next generation vitrojet. So conventionally, uh, the vitrification uh, of the thin samples is done with plunge freezing. And for the thick samples, we go for high pressure freezing. This is something that is that will be in between both. We are planning to use this in combination with NIAR1 at a later stage in the project. To summarize the aim of this work package is the improvements in sample preparation and transfer in uh, different imaging modalities for the characterization of biologically uh, relevant samples. Uh, this um, work package is divided into two subtasks. Uh, one is the development of a universal cryo sample transfer, also the development of cryo stage for different imaging modalities. And the second one is the improved cryo and uh, room temperature multimodal imaging. For the first one, uh, we will be uh, the transferring between different imaging modalities will be achieved with uh, something which is already built in, uh, which is under development in our lab. And uh, for the uh, cryo stage, we will be using the MEMS based cryo cooler from the DEMCON. And for the improved cryo and room temperature multimodal imaging, the main component will be NIAD 1. And the TimePix 4 and the vitrification device will be uh, used to improve the uh, aspects of this uh, task. Uh, and we are not just going to focus in electron microscopy. We will be also correlating our studies with other imaging modalities available in both M4I as well as in ULIC. Uh, with this, I am concluding. Uh, thank you for your attention. I'm happy to answer your questions.